Hola, bon dia. Carl Munson here with the Good Morning Portugal live stream, YouTube and podcast. Uh, a new week, a new home. And I'm hoping that all the technology is set up correctly and that I'm not fuzzy on the screen anymore. I think the way that uh, broadband and, and Wi-Fi technology works now is that if it can't process the data correctly, it just makes it sort of lower resolution definition. That's what, what was happening last week when I was using my landlady's Wi-Fi. Very kind of her to offer. But the great news is Mayo have um, delivered early. Christmas has come early in this house because both me and Mrs. M use the internet to work. And uh, I got a call. The, the Mayo installation was due uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, the 28th. Got a call when I was out and about on Saturday. We're in the area. Any chance we can install in the next hour? Brilliant service. Really think that's great. I know some people don't have a good word to say about Mayo, but to me, um, I'm their biggest fan right now. And I think and I hope, well, fingers crossed, all is well. And we're streaming to you very reliably and safely. But I don't want to end up with egg on my face with that. So do let me know uh, how it's sounding, how it's looking. And do let me know, of course, how you're doing. Como esta? A quick word on that, a quick note on como esta. I often say todo bien, don't I, to you, which I thought was the right thing to say. Turns out, I think it's a little bit common, <laughs> basically. Uh, Gordianus, our correspondent at Portuguese origin, but living in Japan, I believe, the international man of mystery, says uh, he was smiling about the Portugal calling new country, new school video that I posted up that was all about uh, meeting the uh, head of the lower school, I believe, if I remember rightly, and the founder uh, who are setting up the new international school in Lisbon. But when she came, when Chitra came onto the screen, she said, Bon dia, como esta, instead of Tudo Bem, which was music to Gordianus's ears, um, because I believe that is more formal, correct, and proper. So uh, maybe try that today. See how you get on as you go around the place, improving your Portuguese and engaging with Portuguese people in the native language. Uh, I hope I don't get too much stick because of this comment called Gordianus goes on to say, but when you have a school, this is talking specifically about this interview that we did, or it was more of a Q&A, uh, but when you have a school in a country and the language of that country is a second language, are we really promoting and raise Portuguese citizens and culture. As a Portuguese, his personal opinion, he says, colour of skin doesn't matter. If you speak the language and have the culture, you are simply Portuguese. And I do like that sentiment. And that point is well made and well taken, Gordianus. Always excellent to hear from you, as it is to hear from anyone who watches this on the YouTube channel and uh, helping us build up our subscribers so that we can put some food on the table. I need a thousand subscribers to be considered a YouTuber. Uh, can you believe that? The oldest YouTube influencer ever, I suspect. Um, and I like, I'd like to think influencer of the Portuguese lifestyle, interesting people coming into Portugal and uh, having a great time once they're here. I hope that's what you're doing. Let me know how you're doing, uh, folks. Uh, I've got some uh, yeah, bad news, basically, reporting on the fire over the weekend, uh, sadly, with the loss of life of the third firefighter. Uh, which is grim. We have to be so vigilant there. And I don't know, just watching it in horror. Um, and it was a, a very, very significant and major blaze. So we'll talk a little bit about that. We will talk about numbers of Portuguese, uh, not Portuguese tourists, but tourists, tourists to Portugal, uh, the numbers last year and our, our estimations for tourists this year. I counted about three people in Coimbra on Saturday. It's not the millions it was in 2019. Goodness only knows what the impact will be of that. And we'll finish on a light note. That's actually after we take a look at the coronavirus numbers for Portugal, which we haven't done for a really long time, but I wanted to revisit that. I've been um, in communication and <laughs> controversy, basically, about mask wearing. Before anyone starts up, I do wear a mask. Um, uh, my personal position on it is that I'm very, um, I have very mixed feelings about it, but I do wear it. Okay. So no one needs to give me a hard time about that. I follow the convention. I do wear it. Um, and, um, I wanted to just revisit the, the, the numbers, um, uh, of how it's affecting Portugal, which we'll do via worldometers as well. Before we go to the, the, uh, <laughs> the, the cat in the tree story, as it were, uh, of sardines and how to eat them. Are you, this is, I think this divides people. Are you a whole sardine person or do you leave a, a, something that looks like a cartoon fish um, from Top Cat? 
Um, th those of you old enough to, this is what I mean about being the oldest influencer on YouTube. I remember Top Cat. I'm not sure that many of my other fellow YouTube influencers will even know what I'm talking about. A few lovely comments from the community this morning. Hola, well, do you safe and sound in Villa de Rey? Yeah, um, have been concerned about you, Owen. Uh, have a fantastic week, everyone. Um, yeah, glad to hear you well, and uh, thank you for that lovely greeting. A la bon dia from us, off to France today for lunch and wine shopping. How lovely. So in the Ardennes, I suspect, still, uh, the Belgian part, and over to France today for lunch and wine shopping. Living the dream. Fantastic. Sounds great. A uh, la bon dia, uh, simply from Joe Johnson. Good morning, Joe. How are you doing? Um, good morning from Sunny Fandau as well, uh, but it's been hot there, Julie, and uh, yeah, a nice wave. Uh, and uh, Black Star Emoticon, very nice. And uh, from the same family in the same area, the Fundau family, uh, Bon dia, Carl from Joseph. So thank you so much for saying hi this morning. Really appreciate it. As is typical on a Monday morning, we're going to take it nice and slow, nice and easy. Grab yourself a brew. Let's have a, a sit down and take it easy as we ease ourselves into another week and um, pretty much moved into the new home now. What you can't see from your vantage point there is that I'm surrounded by boxes. It is a um, somewhat um, overwhelming vis vista I have in front of me in many ways. But the view out the window, which is my starter screen this morning, uh, if you have a look at that, if you see on the replay, lovely to see vineyards out the window. Fantastic. Uh, bon dia, Carl. Cloudy start in Costanova this morning. Oh, check you two uh, in Costanova, Claire and Steve. Lovely little town of different coloured houses and fab beaches. Yeah, the, the candy stripe houses that makes many a, a postcard, a Portuguese postcard. One of the great views and iconic towns of Portugal, of course. Florence and Archie had great haircuts on Friday. I'm so glad to hear it at Foz Tropics in Foz. Fo uh, Foz de Figueira, I'm guessing. Uh, we did talk about that before, didn't we? Any good businesses, like I've shouted out to M Mayo this morning, my favourite, my new favourite internet company. Um, if you know of a good business in Portugal, give them a mention, uh, as Claire and Steve have done there, Foz Tropics, where you can get your pooch pampered. <laughs> See what I did there? Um, thanks, uh, Claire and Steve. Uh, have a lovely day in Costanova. What's the, what's the little town next to it? <clears throat> Excuse me. Equally lovely beaches. you got the lovely um, iconic... Uh, um lighthouse there as well haven't you so yeah i've, I've had many a nice afternoon at costanova and the town next to it whose name escapes me right now but i'm sure somebody will put me right hey uh, claire bendel's here as well full name jacqueline claire bendel uh hola bon dia from um claire uh who i'm guessing will not have had breakfast we spoke about intermittent fasting didn't we last week and the health benefits thereof good morning to you claire I hope you're doing well, and I hope the Good Morning Portugal people who've joined your community, uh, the uh, fantastic 50s, uh, are behaving themselves. They're a funny bunch. Um, morning, Mr. M, says Gary Austin. He's one of the ones I've been having a to and fro with over the mask wearing. And yes, I say again, I am wearing the blimmin' thing. I did ask the question at one point, does wearing a mask make you deaf? I really struggle to make myself... Um, uh... <laughs> Um, understood, but that's my communication problem as much as anything else, of course. Uh, and we're looking forward to um, uh, talking more about these sorts of issues on the evening phone in when it starts. I am so looking forward to that. And uh, Gary, thank you, Gary. Um, I feel a bit more like Claire Bender when she came on. She was looking fabulous when she when she joined us, and apparently I have a little bit of colour as well. It's the blood pressure, uh, I suspect, Gary. All that. <laughs> All those Facebook conversations, moving endless boxes, catching the sun and raising my blood pressure. Uh, good morning, Carl from Eloise. We uh, just to let you into a little secret: the new, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the new um, wine has been chosen for next Saturday night's um, Good Morning Portugal Wine Club tasting. And I'm, I'm on the I'm on the verge of launching a new crowd funder just to pay for my blooming bottle of wine that Eloise has chosen <laughs> this week. Twenty euros. I don't think I've ever spent that much on a bottle of wine, Eloise. I'm up for it, though. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm absolutely up for it. Uh, 20 euros. Uh, it's going to be a good one. It's going to Well, I hope it's going to be a good one. It's just going to be a good experience, isn't it? And we, just to let you into a little secret as well, we have had uh, an invitation um, from a new winery uh, that we, we've got to go to, haven't we, Eloise? Uh, so the word is getting round about the Good Morning Portugal Wine Club and its community. Uh, some places are obviously putting up a blanket ban of set, of the said people. 
<laughs> not wanting us to darken their doors. Others are welcoming us in with open arms. And um, one such uh, got in touch with us over the weekend. Uh, Eloise, that's such good news. Uh, the emails that you and I got from those lovely people. We'll say more about that in due course. No brekkie. Uh, no brekkie, says Claire. Intermittent fasting. And Gary reckons I love it really. And of course he's right. Uh, absolutely. 20 e euros. <laughs> Shocked him, shocky, shocky cons, shocked him, oticons. There, twenty euros. What is what is Eloise thinking? And that bit of colour is due to lack of fuzziness, thanks to Mayo. Yes, Mayo. <laughs> yes, big up to Mayo. Best internet company <clears throat> of of the week for sure. Let's see how it goes. But yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty um, impressed with the fibre so far. Not even plugged into it. It's, you know, I'm using it on the Wi-Fi. Um, Bob dear Carl, got back to UK from Portugal on Friday. Had a great two weeks traveling in Antejo and Algarve. This is the sort of news we love to hear. Hope to be back soon in August, September to look at Porto, Coimbra areas. You got to come say hello, have a beer if you're if you're uh, making that journey. Uh, I'm on the IC2, which is a really brilliant part of Portugal. It's it's pretty gritty in many ways. The IC2, the old trade trade and transport route an alternative to the motorway but you get to see some serious uh, parts and real parts of portugal and you can turn off to basaco to luso to korea of course which is beautiful and many other places that are hidden gems along that uh, rather gritty and interesting route uh, so yeah jeff give us a shout when you're here and i'm glad you're coming back uh, looking at land says jeff um, with his rather fine yin yang uh, profile pic there i like that jeff and uh, no uh, before you ask, Joe Johnson <laughs> will not be investing 20 euros in a bottle of wine by the sound of it. OK, quick look at the weather then. And uh, I can see from my thermometer uh, that I'm about 20, nearly 24 degrees in the studio already this morning. And uh, let's have a look at the principal parts of Portugal, see what's going on this week. Just have a quick, quick sort of weekly uh, uh, look forward. 21 degrees in Lisbon at the moment, rising to 29 later today. A bit of cloud tomorrow, but temperatures just nudging their way up to, to the 30s. I think it's going to be a cooler week, isn't it, all around the place? Porto, 17 at the moment, 25 to come uh, today, 24, 26, 26 for the rest of the week. Yeah, so mid-20s for Porto. Coimbra has been really hot, and it was hot on Saturday when I was there. Uh, managed to take a really lovely photo of the station. Um, but the, the live stream I did from outside the station, again, like in Tamar the week before, it is so quiet. I mean, it's so nice. I had a lovely lunch in Coimbra on Saturday and um, enjoyed much of what is fabulous about Coimbra and just shocked again at the, the, how few people there were around. I mean, just generally, I, I, it's not just tourism. It, it was just quiet and muted in Coimbra. I guess the students make a big difference there, don't they, in Coimbra? So, but it was, yeah, eerily and um, chillingly quiet. Uh, not as chilling as as um, Orient Station. That time I went to Orient Station, which looked like a total zo zombie apocalypse. But um, yeah, um, hoping that um, more life will return to the streets in due course. We'll talk about tourism to Portugal in just a moment. Coimbra then, 17 degrees at the moment in Coimbra, 29 the high today. Getting up into the 30s by midweek and cooling down again a little bit, just a little bit. Still 29 and 30 at the weekend. And Faro finally on the weather, 24 degrees and humid. At the moment, anyone who's been to Faro knows what 24 degrees and humid feels like. 29 to look forward to today. A spike in the temperature tomorrow, 33, and then cooling down a bit under 30 for the rest of the week. And then a very hot weekend and a little bit of breeze on Friday. It's such a nice sort of mixed bag of weather there. But certainly summer's here, folks, in Portugal. And the warm weather is here. And those people are already big. Some of us are already begging for Christmas, you, you rascals. Uh, okay, uh, let's just uh, share the screen now to show you what's um, happened over in Oleros. Uh, that uh, awful fire over the weekend doesn't look like it's going to be put out until tomorrow. You know, it, it's, it's that scale of fire. And and sadly, a third firefighter has died uh, in the country. And it's been called a monster wildfire. Natasha Don, thank you very much for your coverage at the Portugal resident. Com, all working forests on hold until Tuesday. A third firefighter has died in the space of just a few weeks of, as Portugal's wildfire season shows no sign of abating. Right now, the Aleiros blaze, is, this was um, as of yesterday, still active on three fronts and likely to stay that way at least until Tuesday. Hmm. Explaining the situation, Minister for Interior Ad Administration Eduardo Cabrita, a name we've seen before, announced a ban on any work taking place in rural areas until midnight on Tuesday. He admitted that realistically the fire that began in La Laira 
has since spread to Prensa Nova and Serta could last until Tuesday or even Wednesday. And these, of course, are big uh, expat areas. Uh, Serta, certainly Prensa Nova. Climate conditions, temperatures in the low 40s, 65 kilometer per hour winds and very low levels of humidity are not helping combat the fire. Saving human lives is a priority, said Mr. Cabrito, as you'd expect. Thus, there have been evacuations and may continue to be as combat efforts are described as working from the back to the front of the fire and on the flanks. The firefighter who died has been named as, oh dear, 21 years of age, uh, Diogo Dias of a Proenza Anova fire station. These guys are all volunteers as well. Uh, Prime Minister Antonio Costa has already lamented the death which happened as a result of an horrific accident in which the fire truck the firefighter was traveling with four others, blew a tire and overturned before crashing into a ravine. Dear, oh dear. The other firefighters on board were thrown from the vehicle. So, uh, yeah, um, grim, totally grim. And, you know, I've seen talk on, on social media of these, of, of this, of the bomberos, you know, being paid, being professionalized in that sense. I'm not saying they're unprofessional. I'm just saying it looks like, you know, that's a good idea, isn't it? Um, that, um, the firefighters be paid. The, the The resources there were quite extraordinary. I mean, even at the moment, I'm looking at fogosh.pt, which I urge you to use as a guide as well to know, you know, what you're dealing with if you're in central Portugal, especially. But if there, if there's if you see smoke in the sky and you want to know what's going on, fogosh.pt is the place to go. Still committed on the ground at Lerosh, 868 firefighters, volunteers, 274 uh, fire fighting vehicles and two planes still at the height of that i think there were more you know well into double figures in, in terms of aircraft fighting the fire but that's so significant is it not um that that level of commitment to that and, and what's required to just put these sort of blazes out um the facebook page of bomberos portuguese has carried a photograph of diogo Dias uh, with a harrowing text referring to the likely, likelihood that whoever started the fire and it is believed to have been an act of arson will probably walk free due to being considered a mental deficient or a drunk. So, um, yeah, uh, already speculation on how that started, obviously with very little sympathy and much criticism for the person who may have started that, if it was indeed an act of arson. So um, let me just um, take a, a sip of tea there uh, on that rather sobering uh, news. Hold on, bear with me for just a moment. Oh, that's better. Um, and um, Joe Johnson, I can't believe uh, I could see the fire at 23 miles away. Yeah, it is so chilling, isn't it? Um, when you see that, uh, awful. Uh, today on Fogus, it was in resolution. Yeah, uh, that's absolutely right, Claire. And But still expected to be dealt with until tomorrow. And uh, where Owen is in Villa de Rey saying planes still flying over. So still <clears throat> firefighters busy and committed to that okay um a little bit of this uh, tourism news and and your guess is as good as mine right about uh, what the numbers will be this week uh, i think it might be in three figures <laughs> incredible the amount of um tourism that's been allowed to happen um by various governments uh, in you know in europe and the, the debacle of with with britain's treatment of portugal continues but let's have a look at how it was last year uh, Portugal received 24.6 million non-resident tourists in 2019. It's not going to be anything like that, is it, this year because of the pandemic? Um, and I, I want to re I want to frame this in a particular way. You know what we're talking about here. People do say because of the virus, um, it's kind of partially true, isn't it? This isn't just about the virus. This is about how governments have chosen to deal with it. So what we're dealing with, to be I think accurate, is the response to the virus uh, and obviously largely that is led by governments and so let's be clear about that you know oh god that sounds like a british politician don't i let me be clear um we're dealing with the how it's being dealt with aren't we rather than the virus itself as yet i've not uh, met anyone who, who has had covid19 will thompson has a, a contact and friend remember thompson tuesdays tom was uh not tom Thompson, Will Thompson, was uh, a, a quite a close correspondent of ours in the early days of the pandemic. He knows someone who has had the um, disease and recovered, uh, and we may be talking to that person to find out, you know, what it's like firsthand, which I think is important. You know, the the the, the closer you can get to the actual experience is important. Uh, at the moment, you know, we have been dealing with a lot of 
implications and consequences of the response. Uh, and um, like I said, goodness only knows what the impact will be. But last year, Portugal received 24.6 million non-resident tourists, showing how vulnerable that industry is really, uh, an increase of 7.9%. So the growth was there, uh, says the National Statistics Institute, the INE. Spain remained the main market with 25.5% share having grown 8.2 in 2019 and contributed with around 26.1% of the total increase in the number of tourists arriving. UK tourists increased by 7.6% uh, and tourist arrivals from France grew by 2.1%. Um, French tourists dropping a little bit, it would appear. Uh, German market uh, showed zero variation, while the Brazilian market increased 13.9%. Oh, this is of incoming tourists. Outside the European Union, INE highlights a 23.2% increase in tourists from the USA. Uh, considering the majority of the means of tourist accommodation, camping and summer camps and youth hostels in 2019, there were 29.5 million guests and 77.8 million overnight stays. I mean, that is, that's a massive part of the Portuguese economy, right? 77.8 million overnight stays. That's a lot of money, uh, resulting in increases in 7.4% and 4.3% respectively. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't need to bore you with all, so many statistics, but just to paint a picture there of um, what's going on. One of the interesting things about Portuguese travel, I think, or Portuguese tourism, uh, is the length of stay. Let's see if we can find out more about this uh, just, just a little bit longer here on this article. Leisure, recreational vacation was the main motivation for traveling in 2019, justifying 12.1 million trips followed by visiting family or friends with 9.2 million travel and professional or business reasons uh, with 2 million. Each trip had an average duration of 4.1 nights. Now, this to me is the problem, is people don't come to Portugal for long enough because it's easy to do that, isn't it? You can fly in and fly out uh, and on a, a relatively cheap holiday. And this as, as was my understanding. I didn't think it was as, even as long as 4.1 nights. I thought it was three nights that people came. They came to Lisbon. And they left at Porto traditionally and they, they traveled up the country or they just stayed in either one of those capitals. And, um, you know, that to me is just does. I mean, it's good in a sense, obviously, it's stimulating the economy. It's bringing that money uh, and all those millions of overnight stays. But wouldn't it be better if we invested in what's so great about Portugal? You know, this, the idea of how calm and calma, tranquilo, leisurely Portugal is. Don't rush here and then rush out again and rush around. Come here, take it easy. Even with two weeks, you are not going to see very much of Portugal. This is what, this would be, for what it's worth, this is my advice to the to the good and the great of the tourism industry. Come for a longer time. You know, come come and visit. Like, I think more people are doing that, this sort of nomadic thing, where you're not, it's not you're like you're at work or you're on holiday. I think a lot of people now who are self-employed or whatever, can afford to travel and work at the same time. And you can have an amazing time doing that in Portugal. And I know that's not possible for everybody, just like working from home wasn't possible for everybody. You know, it depends on what your circumstances are. But as a nomadic traveler who's still working, Portugal is so ideal, especially with excellent Wi-Fi like we have here uh, and every cafe with Wi-Fi and towns with free Wi-Fi. You know, come, I mean, and uh, ideally forget about work. Yeah, just relax but come here for longer. Think about staying longer. I think air travel and the price of it is going to influence that, of course. So let's see what happens. But that's what be my, would be my advice for what it's worth. Come for longer to Portugal. Don't just sort of fly in and fly out. And this weekend break thing is so, I mean, it's just awful for the environment, let's face it. Um, it's good for the economy to some extent, but staying longer and touring and traveling in Portugal's many hidden treasures. And we all know about them. And they, they, every, these people here in this community will tell you about their favorite places that you're not going to find on the tourism trail. Little, you know, restaurants, cafes, towns that just don't get mentioned ever. You can drive around this country and have the most amazing time. Do please come for longer. Okay. Um, yeah, so we are, we've got on the ground um, reports basically here of, of, of how the fire in El Arish is being contained at the moment. Until the wind drops, I can't see them containing the fire, says Gary. Um, yeah, we need that wind to drop, don't we? Bon dia from Jane Koshkera. Uh, happy to be flying back to Porto today. Been in the UK since January. Good morning to you, Jane. Lovely to hear from you. And um, I hope that is an easy process flying back into Porto. And that's my uh, intel 
is that whilst if you watch the news, you would be terrorized by all the, as you normally are when you watch the news, um, by the reports of what it's like to come back and forth. And I've heard it from a lot of people firsthand that it's not as grim as people have, uh, as, as the picture that's been painted. Uh, so I hope that's the case for you, uh, Jane, that you are able to fly and that you're happy, healthy and a happy traveler uh, when you come back to Porto today. And welcome back to Jane from Thai. So some lovely, yes, yeah, some lot of friends, um, uh, people who are friends with each other in the Good Morning Portugal community as well, which is lovely to see. Um, so, yeah, welcome back, Jane from uh, Thai as well. Am I saying that right? Should it be Thai or T-Y? Uh, we came for a few months, but now it's been seven months. Yeah. Uh, so you, I think you would agree with me, Claire and Steve, that, you know, you, it's, it's a great place to travel in an extended way. Uh, so you came for a few months, stayed, stayed for seven. Doesn't look like you're going anywhere soon, anywhere, anytime soon. Um, we've seen a lot of amazing places and love Portugal. Quite enjoy listening to your podcast also. That's very kind of you to say so. I uh, hope that helps. I hope that helps. You know, would, wouldn't it be great if all of us here were the guides to others coming to Portugal um, with our uh, little snippets of information and it's st stimulating and encouraging that longer stay approach. Uh, we toured Southern Portugal for a month back in September uh, barely scratch the surface. I'll be back, uh, says Jeff in a kind of terminator sort of way. Um, can you imagine him standing on the threshold of a cafe uh, as his parting words, I'll be back, and the restaurant owner saying, yeah, they all say that in Portuguese. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure you will, Jeff. Um, and so I think some 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 uh, support for the sentiment there. Okay, let's have a look at um, Portugal's, uh, well, not like I was saying before, you know, we're dealing with how it's being dealt with, aren't we? As much as we are dealing with a virus itself, you know, on a, on a biological, uh, medical level. Um, Prakash, just quickly before I go to that, Prakash Sharma, thank you. Very nice presentation. It's so, yeah, because I'm not all fuzzy today. Got much better Mayo Wi-Fi. Did I mention Mayo? Uh, it's so nice to learn about Portuguese tourism. Oh, good. Okay, because I thought that was, a, I thought there were a few too many statistics in there, but it was just giving a bit of a background, Prakash Sharma. Um, about what's going on so yeah thank you for your kind words there uh, where are you are you here are you uh, which bits of Portugal do you enjoy um, okay so worldometers.info we haven't done this for a while uh, this is the picture uh, from worldometers the coronavirus update live and this was you know if you've heard me bang on before about this I always thought that the one of the most telling and useful figures as, as grisly as it is is the amount of deaths per 1 million of population. And I've never heard San Marino being talked about. Who are top of that chart, you might say, um, without wanting to make light of, uh, obviously, uh, the suffering and, and death here that's been caused by the virus. Uh, 1,238 deaths in San Marino per 1 million of population. Belgium is second and UK is third at 674. So let's find out where Portugal is in this show. We scroll down, we scroll down, we scroll down. And then you can really understand why the Portuguese are upset about um, how they've been treated, perhaps, by Britain. There we go. Portugal, uh, the t total of deaths per one million of population, putting it into perspective there, is 168. Uh, total cases, 4,921. Serious, critical, currently 48. And active cases, 13,230. So that's the Portuguese picture. Um, which, um, as, as grim as it is, obviously, for those directly involved, and as I said, we may be talking to somebody who has first-hand experience of the coronavirus soon, if Will Thompson um, can help us with that. We see here, as we drill it down into specifically into Portugal, yeah, 50,164 coronavirus cases and uh, 1,717 people have died of, from the total population. Uh, 35,000 people and 217 uh, all important to get those figures right and specific have recovered. Projections. I would tempted to press that button, but I'm not going to because I'm going to go from coronavirus to sardines in um, in a way that um, you might not have expected there. Um, Prakash just telling us I'm from Nepal, working in tourism promotion project and uh, thinking to do a PhD in tourism. Ah, oh, let us help you, Prakash, with that. If if we may humbly offer ourselves, uh, some people who know a little bit about Portugal now from our own experience, uh, Lisbon is one of the destinations I'm thinking about. Great project, Prakash, and um, I'm hoping um, you um, 
Uh, well, bear us in mind there, uh, really do. Uh, Lisbon, obviously, a great focus. And, and you're yeah, bearing in mind this idea of, please, people, come for longer. Uh, you know, stop the... Um, or not, I don't, it's just sounding very preachy this morning, aren't I? Don't want to um, um, be telling people what to do uh, and to pontificating too much, but just it makes so much sense on so many levels, I think, to have maybe fewer short stay visitors and a lot more longer stay visitors enjoying this incredible country. Boaz adds to what I've just been saying there. If you check infection cases per 1 million population, Portugal is even further down the list. Absolutely, Boaz. Uh, I think it's worth worthwhile um, because we can quite easily become terrified and carried away um, by this um, coronavirus thing. And um, coronaphobia, as I heard it referred to, getting some perspective there. I'm hoping to bring to have brought some perspective on that. It's not to lessen the suffering or the impact and, you know, obviously flattening curves, stopping transmission, etc. But I think perspective is very important and we will go deeper into this in our evening phone-ins, I'm sure. Can you imagine, you know, we have some quite um, grown-up debates here, don't we, in the morning and, and, and on Facebook. What's that going to be like after a couple of minis or a couple of glasses of wine? Probably not your 20 euro wine, but um, certainly your local um I was going to call it, isn't, there's no plonk in, in Portugal, I don't think, um, but your local wine, it's going to be an interesting evening ahead of us, I think, when we talk about big issues um, in a leisurely way. People are different, aren't they, at night to how they are in the morning, and we will find out more. So finally now, let me move on to sardines. This is obviously tourism related, isn't it? People come for the sardines here in Portugal, and this this has been going around on Facebook, um, this How to Eat Sardines um, article. Uh, from We Travel Portugal. We haven't looked at this before, have we? Um, their logo cleverly incorporating the green and red of the national colours there. And uh, this particular article from We Travel Portugal.com. I don't have a byline here. Uh, I guess one of the staffers uh, has written this, or, it's, or everything on here might have been written by one person. I'm sorry, I can't um, credit you directly. Let's have a quick look at their about us to find out more. A blog for Portugal. Who are we? They're Annie from Brazil. Okay, Annie from Brazil, Ollie from England. I think it's a couple, isn't it? Or certainly two people. Uh, Annie from Brazil, half biologist, half patissier, half singer, half writer. That's some complex mathematics. Uh, and clearly two undecided to be just one thing. Polymath, I'll call you Annie. Trying to bring together multiple passions in one to share Portuguese level expert, obviously from Brazil. Ollie, on the other hand, from England. Um, a full-time researcher at a local university in the Algarve, Portugal, hopes to put as much effort into the research behind this blog as he does his day job. Portuguese level, not quite expert. <laughs> We're seeing who wears the Portuguese trousers in that relationship, if indeed you are in a relationship. I made a big um, <laughs> assumption there, didn't I? Assumptions make an ass of you and me. Um, mainly me on this occasion, I think. I'm not going to read out the whole article. It has some nice pictures. That's a good scene, isn't it? I can smell that picture. Can you? Um, sorry, podcast viewers, but it is some rather healthy looking, well, although deceased, but, um, <laughs> you know, when you're buying fish, you're looking for a shiny eye, aren't you? And some good um, shine and sheen on, on the um, fish. Uh, they look like there's some good specimens. They're about to be eaten on the barbecue. And I want to talk specifically on how to eat grilled sardines because a certain size, you can eat the whole thing, can't you? And it's not, you know, it's not beyond people to eat whole fish when they're cooked well enough and crispy enough and small enough. Um, you don't want to be eating a Dorada hole, for example, uh, not unless it's been really well cooked for several days and it's just like a nice, <laughs> crispy, um, different kind of food altogether. Um, I know in you know Chinese food, uh, my mother used to make some really nice um, a Malay style Chinese. Uh, Malay, sorry, I'm mixing up my cultures there. Um, some really crispy fish, little ones, like almost like white bait or smaller minnows, almost heavily, deeply fried in oil, and they with soy sauce on, were crispy and lovely. Eat them whole. But are you a sort of person who eats you likes to eat your sardines whole, or do you like to avoid that bitter flavour of guts? Sorry if you're having your breakfast, <laughs> but the, you know that's what happens, isn't it? So now for the slightly tricky bit, they say here on WeTravelPortugal.com. And for the inexperienced, sardines are served whole, skin on, and with their insides intact. At least before I'd visited Portugal, uh, they say here, the fish I had eaten whole were gutted. So for the first time, it's an experience for me. Yeah, it's, it's, it's in the middle there, isn't it? It's too small to gut in many ways. 
Um, although I have done it. It is a rather simple affair, though, so let's work through it. Presuming the sardine has been expertly grilled, the skin will be slightly toasted and almost caramelized. Mm. Uh, if it's been well salted, there may even be some crunchy salt left on it, too. My mouth is watering. Uh, this creates an intoxicating mix of sweet, smoky and salty sensations. And that's why people love the sardines, those who do love them, of course, uh, also known as the silvers, I believe. Uh, underneath the skin, you'll find the flaky flesh of the fish. Some people will peel the skin off before eating, but many prefer to leave it on. With the flesh exposed, you can gently pull the cooked fish off the bones, leaving the spine and innards alone. Afterwards, you can then flip the fish and do the same again. What should be left is your typical cartoon fish, and that's what I was referring to before, the head, the skeleton, and the tail. Yeah, um, the sort of thing that's seen in trash cans in America and in American cartoons. Uh, now, I might be about to ruin a few Portuguese practical jokes here, but the insides should be left for cats and should not be eaten. We've inherited a cat here. Woke up this morning to find a cat on our sofa um, who then bothered me for ages, presumably hoping to be fed uh, and then hissed at me and left. But that's cats for you. Um, no matter what your hosts or friends tell you, yeah, the innards should, I think, be left for pets. Um, using a knife and fork is optional, and that will, of course, um, divide people. What sort of person eats fish or sardines with a knife and fork? Come on. Um, you'll see people pick the sardines up by the head and tail and gnaw away at the middle, I guess like a corn on the cob. Similarly, you'll see a sardine placed on a slice of bread and eaten with small nibbles, once again leaving the innards and spine alone. That's a lovely presentation. Uh, for those of you hearing and not seeing this, there are some lovely sort of cherry tomatoes, the slightly darker ones, which I really like, a sprig of parsley, um, a well-grilled uh, sardine. You can see the uh, barbecue um, metal work still imprinted on the skin there on a nice bit of pal d'avo, I think, uh, Portuguese bread. Yes, Gary, we will do bread one day. <laughs> Standing joke. And a nice, um, a nice flair, a nice twist of lemon there. Uh, on the plate drizzle of black pepper no doubt some um, hand crushed finger crushed salt rock salt and uh, black pepper yeah and a, a, a few splashes of olive oil that's looking delicious to me uh, similarly you'll see a sardine placed on a slice of bread and eaten with small nibbles once again leaving the innards and spine alone afterwards the unwanted remains are pushed off the bread and the bread will have absorbed all the delicious oils from the fish. This article goes on to describe where and how to buy it. I suspect what you should look for. I'm not going to read all of that with you. I've just whetted your appetite, I believe. Unless, of course, you hate sardines, and that will have been really difficult for you, for which I apologize. So let's leave it there today. See if there's any more comments um, to share with you this morning. Good good turnout this morning. Thanks, everybody. Um, I... <laughs> Gary say pontificating what you do in your own time is your own business. Uh, Principal B uh, Banter Master General Gary, uh, I'm sure is looking forward to the, the evening show when we do that. Uh, thank you, Gary, for that. Sardines on toast for me this morning. Well, bang on there then. And Owen won't have just done simply sardines on toast. He will have flourished that in some expert way. He cooks, you know. Uh, and he'll come around and cook at your house um, for a fee uh, or some sort of deal. Um, Owen is a great chef. You must check him out if you get the chance. Invite him round. Uh, get him to do some catering for you. Uh, fine fellow, fine cook. Uh, and that's what he's having for breakfast himself this morning. Fantastic. Ty, best looking fish are not in the supermarkets. They're still swimming in the sea. Yes, I knew it. I knew I'd be talking to one or two vegetarians this morning. Point taken, <laughs> Ty. And Joe as well, veggie here. So that was that was probably pretty horrible for you two. Uh, again, for which I apologise, Ty and Joe Johnson. I don't see any slowing down of eating sardines in Portugal, however, just now. And we must talk, mustn't we, about v vegetarianism and veganism in Portugal, which is not easy. Um, that's a whole show in its own right, and I'm sure one that you'll be happy to contribute to. Um, because really what we're looking for, I think, Ty and uh, Joe, uh, veggies, uh, the pair of you by the sound of it, and possibly even vegan, don't know. Um, I'm a lot more of an opportunist myself, very happy to eat vegetarian and vegan food, uh, but a bit bit of an opportunist. And um, I think it's the hacks that we're interested in. You know, what? how to... This this can be difficult, can't it, for vegetarians touring Portugal? You know, I'm talking about coming to Portugal for longer stays and touring around. If you are touring around, you do get fed up with cheese sandwiches, I think after a while because with your limited grasp of the language if you're in central portugal that might be all you can say so pal con queijo 
um, bread and cheese, bread and cheese, bread and cheese, bread and cheese. And then there again, another restaurant, another bread and cheese. You might stretch to a pizza from time to time. But we need to know your hacks, vegetarians, so you can help fellow vegetarians coming into Portugal. Let's do something on that. You know, basically, the most unimaginative title, title I can think of so far is being vegetarian in Portugal. Um, in some ways, that could be a very short show. But I think we using our imagination uh, and sh putting our heads together, we can come up with uh, something. Because some people like to do a veganuary as well, don't, don't they? Or, you know, just be, do a bit of a detox or something um, as well. Oh, here's an alternative already, omelette. <laughs> It's like the 70s again, being a vegetarian in the 70s. What shall I have, a cheese sandwich or an omelette? Hmm, let me see. You know, salads. We, you can, if we if we figure it out, I think we can make a vegetarian tour of Portugal possible. Um, so let's do that. Maybe with, it, with flashcards uh, as well and a little phrase book. Um, here he goes. Uh, Joe Johnson says, very occasionally eat fish, but heads and tails are a step too far for me personally. Yeah, uh, they're for the cat. Get the cat to love you. Um, and, and be a bit more loyal than it might otherwise be. Available to cook anytime, anywhere. There he is. The um, Is that Martini? He's the Martini of the cooking world. Owen Lloyd Martini. I've got a new nickname for you. He's available to cook anytime, any place, anywhere. That is Owen Lloyd Martini. Let's leave it there this morning. Thank you so much for your company. Really appreciate it. And um, one that I haven't said, um, this is another show we need to do. The uh, tw you know, 25 plus ways of saying goodbye in Portugal. I haven't said até breve uh, for a long time, so I'm going to stay with a simple abraços, uh, beijinhos, and uh, até breve, and we'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Ciao for now.